Hello everybody and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. I am recording this intro for probably the next 15 or so episodes because when this goes up, I will be in Italy. I've been editing like mad in order to get ready to go and have videos up for you guys while I'm gone. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode and all the ones coming up and the video will start in a second. Trap me over there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I I could see it, but I couldn't disarm it because Karlak hadn't seen it, but, you know, it took everybody running right into it. They're like, there it is, and we blew it up. So, I mean, we're lucky, I guess, that it didn't do more. It did a lot. Somehow, Karlak didn't get hit by any of that, so that's nice. Oh, Oops. That put the wind back in oh, my apparently sense. why is a short rest, which is something I should have considered when Gale was low. I win. totally spaced... Uh, short rest as a mechanic for getting health back. So that's nice. Um, Let's move. I just, I, I have healing spells, so I'm like, I should use them, too, you know? Come on, let's go! I'm gonna send one of the packages to camp, because, uh... This one's not yet grown. Oh, poor thing. Interesting that I could click on it. Fine over there. I better be careful not to trigger that yeah, thing. Yeah, let's see. All right, any any keys? No, now that I can see. Come on. Oh baby, I don't know. Uh, I I mean I didn't. That was a dirty twenty, but it was a twenty. She's rolling great down here. A blackmail letter. Offer package still waiting for you at Fellow Gears. You better not be late again or we'll start to wonder if you're really as committed as you claim to be. Pick it up, put it in the teddy bears, make the donation. It couldn't be simpler, really. If it's still here this time tomorrow, we'll stuff you with it, as you well know. We've plenty to spare. Ha 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 ha, is a stuffing joke. The stuffed animals. Anyway, some monster is apparently trying to put firecrackers in teddy bears. I did see a bunch of toys over on the right. I almost, again, I almost said something, but I was like, there's a giant pile of teddy bears over in the corner. And I was like, that's creepy. Um, so obviously this guy is being, he's like, I pride myself on my philanthropy. He's supposed to make a donation to an orphanage, probably, of toys. And they're all going to be full of fireworks. Like, you think you, also, the fact that they think kids wouldn't notice that the teddy bear has, like, a weird spine, like, on the, even on the inside, you know, is wild. Um, but also, apparently some monster wants to probably blow up. Our friend Arthur was up to something Like, nasty. an orphanage. We ought to check some of his donations. Yeah. He's trying to blow up like an orb. Why is everybody trying to blow Baldur's Gate up? What path lies before me? Everybody, everybody out here trying to blow up Baldur's Gate, and it's like, can we just, can we just all chill? All right, we have bigger concerns. A guide to advantage, a, a hellish holiday. Ha! <laughs> bunches full of bunches of asterisks and whatnot. Gith and the Mind Players. I think I've read this. Yes. Interesting. I don't know if I've read that one. This is a pretty picture. Instructions for donation. Let's see. Gifts for refugees only. Oh, not even just like an average orphanage, but for like... Excuse me? Excuse me? Um, but for refugee orphans, because they probably want them to take them home to their family, and then their families will all blow up, and you get rid of those nasty refugees. How dare they be here, sullying up the air. You know what I mean? People are monsters. I think whatever the trap blew up is still having issues. Unfinished... Stuffed bear with the name God Willington. <laughs> what? <clears throat> well, I think that's all we're gonna get out of here is a bunch of fireworks and uh, a plop. No rats, though. 
Are the rats upstairs? Are the rats metaphorical? Are the rats in her head? At least we'll have some peace now. Peace. I think you guys need to talk to your kid. Also, just so you know, you're like basically living on top of a meth lab, essentially. An Archduke's leadership verification. Now, a pamphlet by the Gortesh for Archduke voluntary camp. I was curious, because it said verification, so I'm like, this might be useful to me if I can figure out what Gortash is trying to do to become the Archduke. Lo and behold, it is literally about Gortash. As Archduke, Lord Gortash's top priority will be verification. Ah, will be to ensure that all those receiving the benefit of citizenship in Baldur's Gate are actually entitled to them. No policy can be more important. Wow, does this not have, like, real-world applicability, right? At least in the U.S. right now. It was, I think it was worse a few years ago, but, like, it's still an ongoing issue. Where, like, especially with Drake Trump, right? His, his whole thing was, like, we gotta put up a wall in Mexico, we're building. It's like, you're an effing moron. You know? And it's, <laughs> so, yeah, there's, like, the immigration policies get stricter, and it's, like, just let people in. They're, they're, li it's literally fine. It's literally okay. Like, a closed border policy never goes well for anyone. You know what? I don't know. It's just. It's wild. But what it does is it's, I mean, what was it, was it France, I think? Fairly? France is pretty, as from what I know, pretty, um, like, ethnocentric is maybe not the, quite the right word, but it, it, t it tries to be fairly insular um, in many ways. Um, but maybe it was England where, like, there, maybe it was England, like, the whole, um, the whole leaving the EU thing, right, was, like, partial, like, on the basis of like immigration fear of like refugee fears and stuff and it's just like yes some unsavory types can get mixed in a hundred percent maybe crime will go up because the refugees also are trying to survive and they're trying to steal food and basic medical supplies you know and maybe there are some terrible people mixed in who maybe are refugees and are just shitty people you know and then like maybe you've got like I don't know, weird terrorist types that come in, too. But as we could see, there was some homegrown terrorism going with the Iron Hand gnomes as it is, you know? And it's just like, there's bad people everywhere. Help people out who need it, you know? Like, maybe things wouldn't go so terribly if you gave refugees the, ne the resources they needed. I know I'm oversimplifying. Things are complicated, but like... I don't know. It's just like it's it's interesting, right? That the applicability of this being in the real world of like fears of like refugees and like immigration stuff. And the US has a massive history of it. Like pretending we don't like back in the day when they were didn't like the Irish or the Italians either. They're like they're lesser Europeans and it's like what? <laughs> you know? Like what? Where, like, the Irish were, like, denied working rights at all, almost, you know? And it's like, now everyone's like, yeah, I'm a quarter Irish, and it's like this thing of pride. And it's like, well, you know, when the Irish got here, loads of them changed their names and stuff because people wouldn't let them work, you know? And people, they got treated very poorly just for being from Ireland? Like, it's just funny how it's shifted, right? Like, now it's like, everybody claims to be Irish at some point, and the Irish are like, yeah, okay, <laughs> sure thing, <laughs> you know? Ah, oh, it's just wild. Just wild. That, that tends to be something that, like, uh, tyrants, tyrant sorts, like, dictator sorts, will cling to is people's fear of the other, air quotes, capital O. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, no, we need to, we need to nationalism, patriotism, oh, get those filthy immigrants out of here. It's like, at least in America's instant, like, for America, we're literally this country, the current iteration of this country is built on immigrants and the blood and bones of Native Americans and African Americans. But, like, you know what I mean? Like... It just boggles my mind. These guys are like, oh, my family's been here for generations. I'm like, at most, out west, your family's been here for, like, 200 years max. If we're going off of that as, like, a rubric, then the Native Americans down the road who have been here for, like, 10,000 years, they have way more <laughs> applicability to this land than you do. Get out. You know what I mean? Like, go on, hillbilly. If that's your, like, requirement for land ownership, Peace out. I, I don't know. It frustrates me. It frustrates me immensely. Oh, let's go upstairs. Let me get off. We'll get off my two cent high horse, um, with a uh, soapbox. 
It's a soapbox shaped, shaped like a high horse with a two, two cent penny in its mouth. The gate is closed. A handbill stand for distribution by a political group calling themselves the keeper of the gate. Okay, so more people trying to keep... So this guy, okay, yeah, this makes sense. This guy has a bunch of this propaganda in his house about, like, keeping refugees out. No wonder he also didn't want refugees in his house. A bastion of commerce and culture, watered only with corruption and catastrophe. Crime, poverty, taxation, taxation. Burdens unfairly heaped upon the soldiers of, shoulders of the common citizenry. Uh, thieves and outsiders grow fat on the tea while native Baldurians starve in the street. One of the biggest lies Oh, for too long, the Grand Duke and his Parliament of Peers have left our gate unguarded. If you like us, stand ready to defend it. Then join like-minded individuals for a frank exchange of ideas. Join the keepers of the gate. Let's go full southern friggin' hillbilly. Enough is enough. The gate is closed. Shut up. So, oh, this makes me so angry. This is always the thing. And the, the people who are pr promoting this idea are always almost always like independently like I mean, independently but like wealthy people you know and like, i'm a homegrown boy who's just living you know off the land it's like uh yeah also you apparently make millions of dollars after a, uh, off of a corrupt ranching industry you have seven atvs an rv and a boat you know what i mean it's like you are you are one of the people you know, and then like the the like everyday Joes get like caught uh, caught up in it, and they think it's real because they're like, well, why am I getting more? Why am I getting more stuff? Why why am I just why am I suffering? And it's like, well, okay, okay, then do you want to work? Like, and this is a very broad example, but do you want to do? Orchard maintenance. Do you want to do like a dumpster truck driving? Like, why aren't you applying to these jobs, huh? These jobs that nobody wants, that like a lot of, in this instance, like maybe people of Hispanic descent are doing when they come in as immigrants, right? Like first generation, or I guess it's like, what? Like the immigrant, right? And then first generation is like the next one, right? I, I am not 100% sure on that terminology, but like, um, like, I had a friend once, or an acquaintance, who was like, they're taking our jobs. I'm like, okay, then go apply to those jobs. Go apply to those jobs that they're taking. They're the jobs that nobody else is doing because they don't want to be as underpaid as those as the Mexican immigrants are being underpaid for those jobs. Like, go whine, go do a factory job. Go do, go do, no, you don't want that? You want a different, oh, I see, so you want it, you want to like, I don't know, just get a job handed to you on a platter that you don't have to work for? Oh, is that what it is? You know what I mean? It's frustrating. Oh, anyway, this, wow. This is a whole big rant, but this is all stuff that, like, again, I don't know, like, I'm not, like, a super political science expert, obviously. I just have what I've seen and what I've read, and, like, this sort of thing, it frustrates me immensely, trying to, like, alienate the people who are coming in who are just trying to make better lives for themselves, you know? And, and it's, which is what this whole, like, the modern iteration of America was founded on, was like, come on over and make a better life for yourself. And in many ways, it's still a better life here, dealing with the crap we put them through, than it is back in their home countries, from wherever they're coming from, you know? And so it's like, that should be telling enough, right? That, like, they're willing to put up with this crap, that it's better than what it is back in their home country. You know what I mean? And it's just like, just, just let people live. Just, just... It's not a big deal. Like, I just, there's, oh, like, there's so much, I, you could go totally more into it and I don't know enough to like totally deep dive into it, but it makes me, from what little I know, it makes me very frustrated. Oh, it's all like, what is it, the stupid patriot groups or whatever that you get here in America? Sons of the patriarchy or something, I don't know. Let's see. Let's have car. Nice I'm moving. I'm. I'm actively trying. I'm, I'm like. I got up the stairs. I'm like. Let me get off my soapbox. And I get up here and I'm like. Let me get right back on. <laughs> Just get right back on that thing. <laughs> oh. Freaking cracking. Freaking people making me angry at in game intolerance. What you got in here? I'm stealing all your stuff. Eminent emerald outfit. I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take those. Taking all your clothes, you bastard. Open up. I was like, oh, I, t I sympathize a little bit, man. Like I can understand. Like it's, you know, people just squat in and then they're yelling at you and you're like, hold on. 
Ha ha, I knew, I knew, I just, mm, I knew, I went straight to the basement and there was a lock and I was like looking around for a key and I was like, I'll bet you it's upstairs and it freaking was, I'm um, just, what, what did he call it, the toy maker's basement, is he actually a toy maker or did he just like get toys? The purged palette, let's see what other crazy things. No point frightening yourselves. Do not add the drider venom. Whatever agrees with your milky constitution. Oh my gosh. <laughs> la 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 la. I want to figure out. Arthur's private musings. Is that what he calls his diary? Oh, he's got a little bathtub and a mirror. An unfinished love story, handwritten by Arthur Gregory, whose name is attached at the bottom of every page. Hmm. <laughs> I saw the first line before I even read it. <laughs> what is this? This is. I bet you this is ripped. I bet mean, it's not. But this is looks like just from the first five words, it could have been ripped straight from the subreddit "Men Writing Women." <laughs> Her ample bosoms fluttered like dove's fingers. What? Dove's fingers? That sounds terrifying. Brushing against his nails, the very ends of his mustache stood to attention as the fire stirred between his eyes. Behind, between his eyes. Behind his eyes. No doubt this was love. Yeah, uh huh. Love, ah, oh, love. The stuff that dreams were made him. It made him sweat to think of it. The graceful, enduring, blossoming, blossoming magnitude of what it all. The priceless, breathless, weightless, sheer, romping joy of it. This man. It's just straight up an incel. And like, <laughs> guaranteed. Those tend to gravitate towards those like weird nationalistic pseudo terrorist groups. As it is. This is this very much fits. Another step forward. It all adds up. Oh my gosh, I am gonna steal his clothes though. Maybe I'll dye them too, because I bet you they look really nice. Is there like Seems like there's maybe another floor? Maybe not. Girly Pop, what are you talking about with rats? I didn't see anything in the basement. Girl, you gotta tell me about the rats. I'm curious. Oh, and I'm supposed to say thank you for helping us. So, thank you. You're welcome. No need for things. Please tell me where the rats are. Oh, and I'm... Gosh dang it. Um... Who told her to say thank you, you know? Oh, is this an outside door to the basement or is this another room? I think I picked up the key. I actually might not have picked up the key because I was like, I don't need to. It will be much easier if I pick up the key. Where'd the stairs go? Oh, I didn't read this. Letter to Mamzelle Amira. Madam Amira, I thank you for the invitation. You know how much I love Charessa's caress, but I still haven't lived down my last experience with the Drow twins, and I fear they won't have forgotten my little mishap. So that's probably my last visit. I hope you'll understand. And so maybe a brothel, and he, uh, did he do something inappropriate? Or did he just, like, do something that, be that was worthy of, like, making fun of him? Caress's caress. Okay, so maybe we can go talk to somebody there Time to, press to see what shenanigans he's been up to. I can hear more intolerance going on outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is gonna this is gonna it's gonna drive me crazy. I have lost the key, by the way. I've, I don't know where the key. It was up here. I know it was. So I'm kind of hoping somebody has it. But uh, I checked all the drawers and stuff and I cannot find it and I don't see it in my inventory or in Carlag's inventory so we're just gonna have to go outside and hope for the best I am curious about this door the children which ch how many children or do you mean these like little ruffians out here there's a bunch of them 
Better not be cursed. Go, oh, freaking dang it. Don't burn yourself. I don't know where I put the key. <laughs> to the not as bad as it could have. We've Ooh, we do have a different. That might be worth it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. We do have a different part. The rats are in here. Why does he have like a separate room in here? That looks much less well taken care of. Mm. Elfin wood soles. Bags. Gladiatorial sandals. There was something back here? Oh! A key! Antidote. Potato, 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 garlic. Beloved sons. Ooh, that sounds bad. Love sons, I'm not waiting around for the absolute cultists to catch me. I'm heading for the tall timber. Look for me at the fishing hole where we caught that gar. It isn't much, but I left you all the gold. I'll manage without it. Now gear up and get out before it's too late. Remember your training and Castile. Don't drag your feet when you walk. You leave too obvious a trail. Okay, so somebody was working in the basement. It seemed well, not in the basement, near the basement. Come on, I need I need others to perceive. Apparently. You're my only Camp hope. Father's work is never done. Something over Ooh, there. Well, this whole entire chest, I guess the fact that it's um trapped, Soldier? that's what it is. I mean, I have the key, but I think I need to disarm it first. <gasps> oh no. Uh-oh. Let's roll again. I don't want that to... Okay. Like, I don't want it to blow up in our faces. And I no have the key. I did. I did use that. Oh, well, I don't necessarily want to take all this. Send that to Halston, I guess. Although I think he actually has banishment as a spell. Is there Why anything else over here? Break. Nothing? This must have been like a servant living down here. It might be that they called it the absolute reporter by our agents. Will fade, but blah blah blah. Everybody's making trouble. The drow are making trouble for the regular drow up upstairs. Uh, the upstairs drow. <laughs> that's that's me. <laughs> the seriousness of the enclosed report is quite unique. Let us hope these reports are received with proper gravity. Okay, so this person's um trying to what? Mother of Halflings. Okay, we got a lot of books in here. It's a crass, but a very comprehensive guide to mixing drinks. Don't identify yourself as a mixologist. It makes you sound like a pillock, which to me doesn't sound like a terrible word, but I'm, if it's a bad word in, like, England, I apologize. <laughs> it sounds like a silly word. There's one word in, in Britain, in the UK, that, uh... Yeah, I think is a P R I C K that I think does it is just like oh you you idiot is what it sounds like to me. But apparently it's a really bad word, and so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the matriarch protector and the sovereign creator of the halfling species. Once there was a community of young pucks and pr prim, pretty halflings called the Lerma Lakes. They were none of them old yet, having only newly formed their community around being virile and strong, so all could contribute to the upkeep and tidying and mending and fixing, and so on. Halflings have a great many activities like that. So it was a big shock when the old woman came and asked to join the community. They told her she wasn't welcome, and they turned her away, plotted but firmly, she went into the nearby woods. Now the Lerma Lakes couldn't have known she was going to take shelter there, so don't think too badly of them, but take shelter she did. When the werewolf man who lived there came to rob the old woman, Yondala invested... Wait, Yandala invested the old woman with knitting needles of impeccable swiftness. That's sick, honestly. She knitted the werewolf men clothes that would expand to accommodate their monthly changes, and they escorted her back to the Lerma Lakes, who accepted the old woman and who took their lumps and scoldings too from the werewolf men, not at all amused at the halfling's lack of sympathy for a clever elders such as this. That is a very halfling story. I like that. What is this? I wish I could pick up these things and add them to just, uh, like, send them straight to camp from here, but. 
There can be no doubt that the patriarch families of the upper city affect such an air of reserve and respectability because they are all too aware that their fortunes are founded on bloodshed, pillage, and exploitation. Hmm, again, not applicable. No one speaks out now of Zeremiah Elton, who founded the Flaming Fist as a ruthless mercenary company that slaughtered and burned for pay along the entire length of the Sword Coast. No one mentions Baron Ilza Borma and the blood spattered ingots shipped north from her slave labor mines in the mountains of Am. The school books don't mention Bogo Sashatar's bone flotilla that plundered Astor Cove and abducted the port's entire population. It's crazy how history gets uh, rewritten or overlooked so that nobody thinks too poorly of the people in charge or the people with all the money. They earned it themselves. Yeah. Interesting. I, th I thought he said, I don't remember the name, but I thought the Flaming Fist guy was supposed to be like super cool according to that Arta or Art Arthur Colet, the bard from a hundred years ago, like who's lived past his time. Um, he, I thought I was under the impression that it was supposed to be like a noble thing, and that now it may have become a bit more corrupted. Let's see, was there any others? And the dialectics of plunder. Let me read that. I couldn't quite click on it. I need to find a merchant, like, hardcore. Uh, oh no, that's the one I just read? I have no idea how these episodes are going to work out, but I'm going to go ahead and just put an ending right here. <laughs> so, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. And with that, we'll go ahead and cut it off there. This is, again, just sort of the generic outro I'm doing while I'm in Italy. Uh, some of these episodes will be a little shorter. Some of them will be a little longer. Uh, but I did my best just trying to make sure I had enough while I was going to be gone. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed the episode. And really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fame, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my Sapling Tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. I very much appreciate it as well. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my Forest Tier patron, who has gone above and beyond and is supportive of me in the channel and who I truly cannot thank enough. So thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.